Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the Associates team today for our discussion around what Dynamics 365 means for your organization. We appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to join us. There are a couple of housekeeping items we'd like to mention before we begin the presentation. All attendees are in listen-only mode. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please either raise your hand so we can unmute you, or you can submit them through the GoToWebinar question box. We will be answering questions throughout the presentation, and we'll also be following up after the presentation to answer any additional questions. I'd like to introduce today's speakers. We have Lance Nepper, Director, Socius One Cloud and Dynamics 365 Enterprise. We have Rob Urbanowitz, Director uh, of our CRM practice here at Socius, and Jennifer Totten, Product Strategy, Socius One Cloud. So at this point, Lance, I believe we're ready to transition the presentation over to you. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is Lance Nepper. Um, we're going to walk through really three major areas today in our hour that we have, and we really appreciate everyone taking the time. We know this is a pretty important topic to a lot of our clients, and we want to make sure that we uh, provide you the information that you're seeking, both from an understanding and also potentially what the next steps can be. So the three areas we're going to cover is broadly what is this digital transformation that Microsoft uh, with the platform of Dynamics 365, what does it mean uh, to you as an organization, and what are some considerations uh, for transition and next steps. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to start in and really talk a little bit about, I'm going to start with the shift in the market. And as we uh, talk to a lot of our clients and as we have been um, over the past few months preparing our readiness around this Dynamics 365 platform, we really see four major areas that are affecting companies as they're looking at, at solutions like uh, Dynamics 365. And the first thing really is that tipping point around cloud adoption. And Certainly, we all hear about the cloud, and we utilize the cloud in different capacities each day. Um, but as we look at um, business applications, especially on the enterprise resource planning or ERP side, uh, the adoption has been slower. And that's, uh, that trend is definitely uh, is changing, and organizations are looking at the cloud as different use cases, including their business applications, uh, both the ERP and CRM, and some of the uh, applications and, and examples we're going to show you today. Uh, we also see and, and we end up talking to a lot more on the uh, line of business where the decision makers have shifted a bit from the IT side to really the departments or the line of business leaders. Uh, what this means is essentially that um, you know, these folks are really driving these decisions, especially for productivity, especially for really meeting the demands of the processes they own. So it's very important, uh, you know, that by, you know, as, as Gardner says in the slide here, by 2017, almost 50% of all IT spending will be outside the control of the uh, IT department. So uh, that is an interesting shift and really has come true as we, as we have conversations with both prospects and clients. Um, you know, certainly we all have finite resources and, and really productivity is a key. So how can we bring solutions together that really reduces the time that you know, our, our users are switching back and forth between the applications that they utilize? And this is really something that does have a very costly factor uh, for businesses to really try to you know, gain those efficiencies is important. And lastly, you know, and, and uh, technology innovation and the speed of, of business. And um, one thing that um, you know, we've seen, I've got a couple slides about this as well, is 40% you know, of today's Fortune 500 companies on the S&P 500 will no longer exist in 10 years. Uh, and that seems, uh, as we look at uh, tradition around that, it seems uh, very difficult to imagine. But as we look at what is digital transformation and maybe how uh, companies today are utilizing some of these facets that you'll see in Dynamics 365, um, there will be some examples that you're very familiar with that uh, will really come and you know, bring it to fruition for you. So digital transformation, um, this is terminology that uh, it sounds like a buzzword. It sounds like you know, the, the latest and greatest uh, thing that will go away. Uh, in this case, really it's not. And it's not really just about technology. It's, how, it's business strategy that requires leadership of companies to really to re-envision their models, and really embrace a different way of bringing together the key factors around people, process and data to really create new value for their for their customers while also capturing new opportunities for the organizations. And really, uh, we don't see this as a trend. We don't see it as a phenomena. It's really taking advantage of things that are available today that may seem futuristic to a lot of companies. But really, these are things that we're going to show you and talk to today that Microsoft has made available in these solutions that you can leverage uh, in, in today's business terms. Um, and you know, as technology evolves, uh, with the slide that you see here, the third platform, and just to highlight the third platform for a moment, you know, um, several years ago, um, uh, IDC, which is a research firm, has 
to find the third platform. And what we mean by that is the first platform would be, uh, for example, the mainframe uh, uh, world as far as uh, you know, business applications and, and those type of um, systems behind powering the solutions. The second platform would be the client server platform, which is you know, the last 20 years we have lived in uh, between servers and clients and, and applications that are residing on the servers, whether it be in your on-premise environment or within maybe a, a data center hosting or cloud environment. Uh, and really the third platform is really focusing primarily powered by the cloud, but also looking at how we can utilize big data, business, social, and also mobility to drive these business applications. So let's take a minute uh, and talk about this. And, and as far as um, really this, this is also driven a lot by the fact that our personal lives and our professional lives have combined as far as what we expect with technology. So things that you see in the bullet points, great experiences from a, from a user level. Uh, we like to be able to pay things just as we use them. We don't want to really have the burden of the assets. Um, you know, we basically like to pay for them as we need them. And we, of course, want more speed, more power, more flexibility within the solutions. And so those things, again, are really driving the push of some of these platforms. And the, uh, the, the slide here, it says, IDC predicts that by 2018, a third of the top 20 companies in every industry will be disrupted by a competitor who have embraced the third platform. So if you think about companies um, maybe today that, uh, as you see them, um, these are ones that really are great examples of uh, whether it be Netflix uh, you know, versus the, the, the blockbusters of the world, Uber and the cab industry, and Airbnb as it affects the hotel industry. All of them, you know, if you look at their solutions, simplicity, ease of use, powerful capabilities, great experiences, they've been able to leverage them to make a huge impact in their competitive space. And so as we break down the four areas of the third platform, 50% of cloud applications today are not use cases that were served 15 to 20 years ago in the client server era. So these are new applications, new methods and approaches to doing business. You know, by 2020, the amount of high value data will double, uh, whether that's because of uh, you know, the increasing, uh, decreasing cost of, of, of server space, of storage, uh, and the ability to track and desire to, to really process more data. Uh, mobility, uh, and that's an, it certainly something we've all, you know, we utilize every day with our phones, but how does we shift that to the enterprise, and how can we allow our users the capabilities to, uh, to use their, their devices, whether it be mobile phones or tablets. Um, and a lot of these things, again, are things that never existed on the PC before. And lastly, the social technologies. And knowing that that's a huge opportunity, 85 billion by 2019, you know, a great example where Microsoft you know, added LinkedIn to their portfolio of products and solutions. How do we leverage that amount? And, and I think we'll talk a little bit about that with our customer engagement side. But how do we uh, leverage the LinkedIn type uh, technology to help us drive our business processes forward. And so those are just some really key areas around that third platform. Uh, I want to talk just a minute about innovation accelerators. And so uh, there's four things as you look at the third platform that with the usage of the four uh, key pillars there, what are some things now that we can leverage? And for example, next-gen security. Um, with Windows uh, 10, the, uh, the uh, most recent update has something called Windows Hello. And so as you log into your Surface or your tablet, it will recognize your face through facial recognition software. So instead of keying passwords in, the system will automatically recognize you and it has security built in to ensure that it is you. Um, but that's great from a laptop perspective, but think about it from your banking solutions or for logging into sites. You know, the number one security issue is people remembering passwords or putting passwords on a post-it note and setting it next to your keyboard. Uh, this really eliminates a lot of those type of uh, security risks. Uh, the augmented and virtual reality, um, you know, whether it be uh, uh, Microsoft HoloLens, whether it be uh, things like the Samsung on the virtual reality. A great, a great use case of this, and Microsoft demoed this a few months ago, is working with Lowe's and Pinterest, where as a user of Pinterest, I can upload pictures of kitchens that I think are something that would be desirable for me as I look to build out my new kitchen. You can upload those to Lowe's. They process it through a machine learning or artificial intelligence. They match that against millions of kitchens in their systems. And as you walk into the store, you can put on your HoloLens and you can see in the picture there, you can actually design your kitchen right there in Lowe's. Uh, you can even see where he's clicking on different aspects of the kitchen, changing height, sizes, colors, all right from the experience. And if you think of this as futuristic, uh, for those of you that are in Dublin, Ohio, you can go to Lowe's in Dublin, Ohio today and utilize this technology because it's available and something that is, is, is really being utilized uh, in, in a business environment. So if you're a company that maybe you do configuration or you do build outs, um, how do you leverage this to, to really delight your customers and provide that ultimate experience with technology? A couple more, uh, the Internet of Things. 
So think about a field service company that can uh, basically receive a constant flow of information from their machines as it relates to preventive maintenance. A uh, flower grower maybe that places a sensor in their greenhouses and collects data for temperature, humidity, all that information that we can then uh, leverage and build uh, BI and analytics to really manage their, their warehouses and tie that into maybe their uh, the ERP system. Um, and lastly, just the cognitive systems. And this is things like um, what Microsoft calls Cortana Analytics or IBM has the Watson, but really connecting the applications to machine learning that can automatically consume data, evaluate it, can learn patterns in your data, and generate things like demand forecast planning or things like um, customer engagement and having a sales rep as he logs into the system, he can see every interaction, emails, contacts, uh, uh, things that have been attached, any feedback that on Twitter has come in, in one view be able to see all this information and maybe some recommendations from the system telling him how he should interact with the customer based upon where they are. These again are things that are available today and things that the systems that you're going to see uh, leverage today. So you know, uh, this is uh, Satya Nadella. He's the CEO of Microsoft, and you know, uh, their their mantra around cloud first, mobile first world, that uh, really is driving their vision for these solutions. Uh, Satya, uh, prior to several different stops at Microsoft, was actually the lead for the Microsoft Business Solutions. Uh, so he has a real passion and a vision. And what he could not do 10 years ago with solutions is bring things together like Office collaboration, like Dynamics 365, leveraging these cloud platforms to really uh, bring bring to the market a one you know, one stop solution for this uh, for these type of technologies and so um, as we as we look at uh, how Microsoft is really leveraging digital transformation it's through three things it's through that personal computing whether it be on the desktop the server side it's the building the cloud and uh, intelligent platform so uh, since open in the first data center in 1989 Microsoft uh, has invested over 15 billion dollars in their Azure data center so over 30 regions and, and uh, really nine of those in North America with four new regions coming online uh, in the near term. So they continue to invest, and really what this means for you as a customer is you have the choice if, you know, if you're leveraging the Microsoft Cloud, the software as a service type model, you get, you get to determine where you want your data to reside, what scale redundancy you need, both from a performance as well as high availability of your business applications. Uh, and lastly, uh, reinventing the uh, productivity and business processes, this is where we're very excited to show the focus and, our focus and commitment to leverage these cloud platforms to bring together uh, productivity like Office Excel, uh, 365 Office Excel. Uh, we know that the majority of our clients use Excel uh, every single day. That's the number one business intelligence uh, tool out in the marketplace. But how do you better embed that into the experience, better into the existing workflows and processes so, again, users aren't bouncing around between different applications, uh, whether it be ERP, CRM, or the Office applications. So three major ways they're looking to, to drive that. So let's jump right into what is Dynamics 365. And so when you look at the Microsoft Cloud, uh, we see it really as five major areas. Office 365, which I'm sure many of you are aware of, uh, which is the web, you know, web uh, version of Office, Exchange, uh, Excel apps, what, Word, et cetera. Uh, Dynamics 365, which is what we're here to see today. Azure, which is their cloud platform. Cortana Intelligence, which is the machine learning and business intelligence. And the mobility, security, and operations. So as you take those major areas and you bring them forth, uh, we're really going to spend time today looking at the productivity, the, day, you know, the business app side, but primarily to introduce to you uh, the features and functions and what you can expect out of the Microsoft Dynamics 365 platform. So to bring these together, um, you know, traditionally speaking, as a partner and as customers, we have leveraged what Microsoft, you know, what the industry defines as CRM or customer relationship management, and ERP, which is for enterprise resource planning. And the ERP side would be the solutions like Dynamics GP, Dynamics AX, NAV, and SL, uh, Microsoft CRM on-premise or online. And so we have many customers leveraging uh, you know, one or both of these solutions together. Uh, and there's sometimes challenges because they are separate platforms that lead to whether it be custom integrations, whether it be separate data miles. It makes it difficult sometimes to get the data you know, connected between the applications and to bring processes together between the applications. So what Microsoft has done with Dynamics 365 on a couple different levels is to, to uh, develop a single solution platform that it brings together these workloads, these processes, onto one platform connected with a common data model between the two that allows you to, whether it be integration, build new processes, build mobile apps, um, all of that within one single platform, whether you a, uh, you're a small uh, or medium-sized company, whether you're a large enterprise company, or whether you focus on manufacturing, sales, field service, project-based business, 
uh, all those areas would be available to you uh, as, a, as a Microsoft Dynamics 365 customer. So how does the uh, how does this become an advantage to you as a customer? Um, you know, four four major things we're going to hit on. Um, number one, purpose built, which uh, whether you want to start on the, uh, the financials version, which we're going to show you, whether you're an operations customer, each of these solutions allow you to invest in what you need to add the users that you need that, uh, to, as you grow. You can certainly then increase functionality. You're buying a license that then becomes an implementation decision on what processes you're looking to automate. Um, the productivity aspect is, again, tying together these, these critical tools that really are already built into your processes, but maybe not as seamless as what they'll be moving forward. The intelligence, um, not just providing you nice dashboard, which they are wonderful looking dashboards in these solutions, but also to provide you intelligence that you can act upon uh, that provides both preventive, whether it be proactive, things that you can tell your users uh, and the system is learning uh, patterns in your data and how the system works uh, to make suggestions to you to, better, again, better improve your customer outcomes. Lastly, the adaptability, uh, and it's a, mo a very modern, it's a web-based platform, software as a service, extensible, allows for customization and modification using a lot of the same tools that we're leveraging today uh, and the solutions that uh, are currently Microsoft solutions. So just to give you a real good example, how do we implement business processes? So uh, you know, as you look at this uh, business process from lead to invoice, in today's terms, typically speaking, Microsoft CM handled a lot of the lead opportunity Quoting in most cases, sometimes that was in the ERP. The sales order then fulfillment invoice typically happened over in the ERP system. And what we're doing is looking at the ability to have one solution and they're already built together so they seamlessly integrate. When you create a quote, it automatically creates an order over in the operation side or the order processing side. Uh, and it's one seamless experience for your customers, one seamless experience for your individual users as well. So you know, the ability to really tie these processes is a key aspect of what Dynamics 365 provides. Hey, Lance, this is Rob. If I could just jump in here real quick Absolutely. on that slide. Yeah, one of the things that I see often, I'm, I represent our CRM practice, but what I see often on, from a CRM perspective is more and more anyone who's using uh, what traditionally was CRM, Dynamics CRM, uh, information from the ERP system is critical for success for a customer-facing uh, representative, whether it's in service or sales. And the, the fact that you can, in the future, have data that's literally seamlessly coming to you um, with accuracy and speed is critically important, whether you're in the call center, uh, at a service desk, or the salespeople out in the field. So it's not only you know, pushing the data from CRM side into the ERP system, but it's getting that information back so they can make better decisions as they're in front of their customers in the field or in a call center. Okay, thank you. So let's talk now about productivity. Um, and really, we just wanted to show you, as you go across these different solutions, and we're going to really distinguish the solutions for you between enterprise and financials. But the real key here thing is, you know, it is a, a being a software as a service, web-based application, very modern looking, very interactive uh, uh, screen. And this is what you see in here is the sales or the customer engagement screen around opportunities. As you move down through the different areas, operations uh, being your, in this case, inventory management or sales order processing type functionality. As you move into the financials version, which would be for the small and medium-sized co companies, um, one seamless look and feel, uh, the same level of functionality, and, and again, each of these in various fashions have implemented the digital transformation technologies to provide those solutions to you regardless of the platform that you choose. Also, um, as you, this is really where uh, they have really changed the perspective of how do, how do our users work? How do I want them to interact with the system? So here's a great example, this case out of the financials version, where it, a user is uh, in their Outlook email. They pull up an email. Let's say it's from a customer asking for a quote. Well, from within Outlook, they can then click on the financials button, create the quote directly in Outlook, attaches a PDF and send that quote right to the customer, never leaving the Outlook client. So it really is about power of choice. You still have the ability to have the full client, the web client, but also the integration to Outlook and, and bringing the collaboration together where employees work, Excel, Outlook, et cetera, right to the, store, right to the, right to the front uh, is a very powerful aspect and, and something, again, we're very excited about. As we get to adaptability, and really the key here is, as I mentioned, that this is the actual user interface for the, the, the one screen, simple, one unified screen. Whether you're using financials, operations, customer service, sales, et cetera, the users come to one location to launch the applications that they need to use. 
And so that being said, you see the stuff that Microsoft provides also as part of this, they're providing what they call app source, and I have a slide here in a minute to really give a little more detail. But with an app source, it allows you to uh, really peruse a marketplace of other applications, what we traditionally think of as ISV or independent software vendors or add-on solutions. They have really built that community within this experience. So you can then go out and see other type of you know, feature and functionality and other software that you can plug into your implementation, directly access, install that into the environment, and add it to your, you know, to your portfolio of solutions that uh, you're, you're putting in, in front of your uh, users and customers. So for example, um, really three, three big things, as I mentioned, you know, the ability to discover, you can trial solutions and, and really acquire them directly from the app source. It does allow business users to really get started fast. Uh, you know, the trial is a great example. We can put it in that test sandbox company, validate that it's a good fit, work with us as a partner to kind of vet that out and then determine if you want to put that in. And really just tying together all their Microsoft applications together um, to, to provide that seamless experience. So App Store is just another great uh, way that they're going to deliver these solutions around what is Dynamics 365. So, um, this, this, this slide, although a lot of different points here, is the glue of, of the solution. And uh, what Microsoft is uh, calling the common data model, or the CDM, as sometimes we call it as an acronym, what we're seeing here is uh, within the application, there, the common data model is this cloud resident database that's built really within years of experience together and essentially comes with hundreds of standard business entities that span all the business processes across what we today call ERP, CRM, in the office productivity area. And so the beauty of this approach is it really means it's going to be far easier, faster, and cheaper to deploy integrated applications really ever than before because you have a consistent schema between these platforms as one solution. So as you can tell, as you're working through and, and interacting with your customers, the email activity, the meetings, the messaging, things that are traditional CRM versus maybe support cases, service requests, uh, management of opportunities, you know, all these things intersect together and leverage this platform of collaboration and app business applications. And again, is really that glue uh, of um, the, the pull of these solutions into a very unified experience. So let's talk a minute just about the intelligent aspects. Uh, and there's quite a few different options here, as you're seeing on the screen. Um, it, when we look at this, uh, I mentioned this briefly about the relationship insights. So as you think about you're dealing with a customer, maybe you have a salesperson on the phone uh, that you know, is looking to make a call to a, to a customer, um, the ability for them to have an application that connects and analyzes all your data across CR, what is today, again, term CRM, the operations side, web, social, any data sources that you want to connect to this, uh, to this relationship insights, it will give you that 360 degree view of the customer with suggestions on how to improve engagement. So that's leveraging an actionable way of using data intelligence. It's not just dashboards, it's actually giving recommendations for the best way to approach this particular customer. Um, you know, basically allowing people to see at any time statuses around the relationships and um, you know, the next couple areas around productive sales and forecasting. So the system will automatically connect to your data as you're transacting, you're, you're buying inventory, you're selling inventory. It's pulling that data into the, into the uh, machine learning of artificial intelligence model. It then provides for you recommended purchase orders and so forth, sales forecasts and inventory forecasts, all seamlessly built in. So these, again, are services that are available on the platform, that are already connected. At that point, it's just really the ability to use that and really um, adjust the, the, the machine learning to, to really meet your business needs. So there's several other things here, uh, you cross sell, upsell, think about from a you know, website activity or someone's on the phone talking to a customer. Um, you know, all these things are just different aspects that, they, again, today are built into the application from day one. Yeah, and Lance, for instance, the cross sell, upsell, it's a, if you can think about like Amazon, people who bought this also bought that. So it's the machine learning to help those representatives in front of customers immediately to understand what this type of customer would or could should, or should buy. So it helps them, obviously, to drive those sales. Great, great point, Rob. And I think that, you know, I've been involved in, in development of websites and trying to really, you know, develop that functionality outside of a platform. A lot of times required really smart data scientists, people that can help build algorithms and really build that up. And this is things that will be available you know, right, right in the box in the solution. So thanks, Rob. Uh, I mentioned to you about the dashboards. And, and yes, we do have, you know, fantastic looking dashboards. A lot of things uh, that are leveraging Microsoft Power BI, the ability to not only view, but also drill into, drill across, 
be able to view information uh, and a power user capability to build these solutions out are right there across the dynamics data. Again, across our traditional workloads and working processes around sales, marketing, and operations. Uh, the the, the uh, other key thing to point out here is they have really built the solution to support the mobile footprint, whether it be mobile phones, whether it be tablets. Uh, so users are not tied down to PCs. They're not you know, restricted to just laptops and PCs. This data will scale. It'll view. Uh, you can actually utilize a mobile phone to enter transactions directly in the system. I can create a sales order. I can create a purchase order. I can approve information. So it really is moving it to whatever device you're bringing to the table, whatever web browser you want to utilize. Um, that really is the power of what this, this tool provides. That's on the intelligence side. Okay, a couple more slides, and we're going to move into some more specifics around the Dynamics 365. And just really two things that uh, we wanted to highlight. And these are applications that Microsoft has made available as part of the uh, Office 365 platform. Uh, they are tools that will integrate directly uh, day one with Dynamics 365. And the first one's Power Apps. So think of Power Apps as the ability to connect as a power user. It doesn't have to be a developer, but to be able to connect to your systems, create new data elements or leverage data in the systems build applications that are mobile applications without actually writing one line of code and publishing those web applications uh, so they're available on mobile devices uh, to, uh, such as, um, again, as far as the phones or tablets and things of that nature. So that, uh, and, and to take it one level further on the operations side, they're actually embedding that in the system so you can click on a screen and click on fields and you'll be able to then publish with that an application directly to the web that will be available to your customers or to your users um, seamlessly through the solution. So mobile app development has become much simpler and uh, something that, that it really is kind of what do you want it to be as far as how you want to develop mobile applications. The second one is Microsoft Flow and think of this as your automated workflow uh, solution and, and, and essentially a lot of these solutions in, in CRM today and in, uh, whether it be AX or GP etc we have workflow capabilities. But what this allows you to do is build workflow that not only is within the application, but also can go across to your favorite applications, whether that be SharePoint, Outlook, Dropbox, OneDrive, Slack. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of applications that already have built-in connectors so that you can go across these platforms. Again, things that you, you leverage from a collaboration or productivity perspective today. Flow allows you to connect those and have one seamless tool for developing those workflows. So again, day one, these are available uh, for uh, you to, to include, add to your system, and it's automatically built to leverage those tools uh, as you're putting out a new workflow and uh, mobile applications. And so we Lance, see, one, yes, one quick example on Microsoft Flow, if I could. Uh, you know, one easy example is if, for instance, hashtag your company is picked up on Twitter, that tweet can automatically be pulled into CRM as a lead or Dynamics 365 Enterprise is a lead and then um, immediately you'll have uh, that lead and, and that tracking as well. Yep. Great example. Yep. Okay. So, uh, you know, we feel very strongly and uh, we've been working with Microsoft in, in the past few months to build out our solutions, to our go-to-market strategies, and certainly it's very important for our, us to you know, define the vision and direction of, of uh, these products to you, our customers. But we really do feel it's, there's no better time to be a Dynamics customer. Um, and as far as what solutions Microsoft is developing and what they continue to uh, put into the roadmap and what we see is a very exciting opportunity. And so let's break down, if we can, the two different editions of Dynamics 365. Uh, I'm going to hit these two at a high level. I'm going to talk a little bit about the enterprise operations. I'm going to let uh, then Rob and Jennifer continue the conversation around the, uh, the customer engagement side as well as the uh, business edition. So just at a summary level, uh, these are not hard and fast rules, but this is really how it's being positioned to the market, is the business edition, uh, and just for um, definition, the business edition uh, started with the Dynamics NAV code base uh, at Dynamics 2017, which is the on-premise version today. So that was the starting point, but really this is a new product uh, that was built from that, that baseline and added feature functionality, all the integrations, all the different things that we've talked about so far. Really, it's optimized for that 10 to 250 uh, size company. Um, it is the financials area. Now, that's one real thing that we want to make sure we're clear. It's, it is called financials, although it does have, and, we, and Jennifer's going to hit for us, feature and functionality across, which is the traditional um, um, sales mark, excuse me, not sales mark, um, sales order processing, purchase order, inventory. Uh, we're going to walk through that for you, but that is the terminology, the name that the business edition goes by is financials. 
Uh, it is going to have some future sales and marketing capabilities. Uh, we'll call them light CRM functionalities. Uh, the cloud, this version is only available as a software as a service. There is no on-premise version available, uh, nor do we uh, see one in the forecast from Microsoft. Uh, the business edition does have a 300 seat maximum and there are no user minimums as it relates to business edition. Uh, as you then shift over to the enterprise edition, uh, it is optimized for larger companies, 250 plus. However, uh, it doesn't mean, again, you have to have that size. A lot of our customers that are today AX customers or large CRM customers, if they have more complex business processes, if they have the need for global business and those type of things, uh, we certainly will evaluate the solutions. And so you can see here that it is compromised of uh, comprises of two different versions. It's the CRM Online, which um, as of uh, November 1st has moved over to Dynamics 365, as well as what was AX7, which is the software as a service based version of AX. Those two together make up the Enterprise Edition. And so right now it is a software as a service model. There is going to, uh, there is on-premise dual right use, so you can maintain a on-premise version, but also own rights to, to use the software as a service version. Um, as it relates to on, a true on-premise version, on the um, there is discussion for Microsoft sometime next year that a full ver uh, on-premise version is in the works, uh, but that is still looking at probably third quarter of next year. Um, there is a 20 user minimum on the uh, operation side, so that would be what was AX7, uh, AX7. Uh, and CRM we'll talk about in a minute as far as the, the user counts there, but it's not uh, there's not a minimum in the same way there is on the uh, on the operation side. So as I mentioned, um, you know, Dynamics 365 operations is the combination of Microsoft Dynamics AX and Microsoft CRM Online. So if you look at the features and functions, uh, those areas fall under those two, those two stacks and combined they make up Dynamics 365 Enterprise. And so um, you know, moving forward, uh, I'm going to hit a little bit on the operations and I'm going to turn it over to Rob to talk around some of the uh, you know, customer engagement type areas. Uh, but these, this is the combination of feature functionality, you know, again, brought together through that common data model. Um, you know, Dynamics 365 for operations is a full functioning solution built for really uh, several uh, key industries, retail, distribution, um, the um, manufacturing as well. Uh, we also have the um, public sector area. And um, so, and, and service would be the, the fifth. And so, if you look at the solution sets, it has full functioning around all the workflows and processes, all the way from uh, those areas up to the financials area. So, a uh, full-blown financial management as well as a reporting tool. It does include uh, its, its own separate HR module as well. Um, and it does, you know, from the ability of a, a modern user interface, you saw the web browser there, integrating the business intelligence, the machine learning, the big data. All those aspects are you know, good as it's part of that. And one thing I did want to highlight that's pretty important is, uh, and I'm going to just kind of move to the next slide, is this application lifecycle management. And this is a great solution for Microsoft that sits on top of our platforms that allows you as a customer and us as a partner to work together to manage the lifecycle of that solution. So all the way from deployment, so when, I, when we go to spin up a new version of Dynamics 365, we can actually do it all through lifecycle services. Typically speaking, and I'll be conservative here, within an hour, we can have a complete set of production and development environments in the Microsoft Cloud available. Uh, at that point, it then becomes a, what typically is a 40 to 80 hour process to build out the servers, get everything set up and running. We can then start right into the implementation of you know, working on the business processes and all the things important. So it really takes away a lot of the technology challenges that we have seen with some of our on-premise versions. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to highlight. Um, but as you know, you go across, it's, it's a, uh, across the integration platform, you know, high volume data, uh, a lot of flexibility for bringing data in and out of the system. It is a global based platform, so it is, you know, it's really based on AX 2012 R3, which is the current version prior to this release. That's on premise, the, um, the, the tried and true version, I'll say. Uh, and it is comprehensive across, you know, intercompany, uh, multi-currency, multi-language all those things that you would expect if you're doing, again, interacting with global or you actually have locations in multiple, loca uh, multiple geographies. Um, and so it is, a it is a very strongly supported developer platform using uh, Microsoft Visual um, development tools like C Sharp, Visual Studio, et cetera. Uh, and with this version, uh, it will have a continuous update. So there's no longer this major release cycle. Uh, on your, as you determine for Microsoft, uh, you let them know when you want to update as far as major updates, but certainly they're managing those continuous updates and you're always getting the most recent feature functionality as part of the operations platform. Rob, I'll turn it to you for the uh, customer engagement. 
Well, thank you, Lance. Um, yeah, so this slide here represents the Dynamics 365 Enterprise version for customer engagement. And as you can see, there's five main areas of functionality that are in the D365 Enterprise version. Sales, customer service, field service, project service automation, and marketing. Um, it, the, I'm only going to be able to touch on the surface of the functionality that's included here today, but rest assured on November 30th, we're going to have another webinar that's going to dive deep into all the functionality, all the latest release of D365 that previously was CRM and CRM online. <clears throat> uh, but let me start in the middle here on this slide. Marketing, uh, as you can see, um, it's, it's um, identified as Adobe. So Microsoft has made the decision to drop the current uh, Microsoft Dynamics marketing solution and move to the Adobe platform. It's really a, the leading edge and one of the, really the industry's top mar marketing platforms. And from that perspective, it's going to be built on Azure and integrated and completely a part of the uh, D365 Enterprise version. It's not yet available. That's yet to be in early 2017. There should be some more information and announcements for its release. But uh, I'm really looking forward to that because it's a, a dynamic platform. Um, then let me spend a little time on uh, the other areas. So sales. Um, well, first of all, all of customer engagement is really meant to be to enable those uh, people that are closest to customers to be very efficient and effective in their work. So let's take, for instance, sales. Um, customer management. Customer management is, is all about opportunities and sales processes as we know it today. But it also includes mobility and the ability to have partner channels to enable your sales associates to work with partners more effectively. Um, sales performance is all about dashboards and, and gamification. So driving performance through gamification of sales reps to get them to uh, perform at levels that you need them to do that ultimately um, drive the behaviors that you want to see sales reps do, whether it be generate more leads or uh, close more sales. Uh, personal engagement includes like email intelligence, prioritizing your emails um, so that you know, you, are, you basically uh, leverage your time more effectively and get to the customers that are most important. Um, actionable insight, um, that uh, has a lot to do with some machine learning as well. So think about lead prioritization. So as leads come in, they're prioritized automatically based on which are most likely to close or product recommendations like we talked about previously. So all very exciting functionality that's now being released and packaged together in sales. Uh, Lance also talked a little bit about relationship ins insights, but that extends even to emails for salespeople. So if a salesperson sends an email to an individual, they can see what the open rates are for those emails, much like a marketing person does uh, when they're sending out marketing uh, email campaigns. Now you can do it on a one-to-one -one basis um, for a sales individual. So that's very, very powerful to see if you know, you're actually making a connection with your customers as you, um, you know, send emails to them. On the service side, customer service side, um, lots of functionality that's listed there. Omnichannel, of course, is a unified service experience. So whether the individual is um, interacting with your customers by phone, email, uh, social, or chat, they, they have the ability to have the same experience across all those different channels. Um, Self-service, this is pretty self-explanatory, having your customer's ability to you know, be able to solve their own problems by basically simply going to either a website or having an interaction channel like that. Communities, um, as, as branded communities that look and feel just like your website with content, and that content is right out of CRM. So that CRM content could be cases that are open or other information, literature, and other things that you want specific either customers or partners to have access to. Um, agent enablement is intelligent case management, again, having the intelligence behind creating cases. Um, and then uh, service intelligence allows you the ability to see trends and do forecasting and also have great dashboard functionality associated with it. On the field service side, that, if you recall a few uh, years ago, Microsoft made an acquisition of Field One, which was incorporated into CRM as field service capabilities and now that's rolled into Dynamics 365. So it's got all those capabilities that are necessary for a field service agent to be successful. And it includes things like scheduling and dispatching with automated routing and automated scheduling to optimize the schedules of your resources. Inventory management so you can track inventory as it leaves a, a warehouse and gets onto a truck and the field agent actually you know, puts it into uh, your customer's um, on-premise 
uh, solutions and then be able to track that through mobile, the mobile side and also being able to uh, do RMAs and such like that. Uh, connected field service is all about the predictive maintenance. And, um, it's also connected with the ability to leverage um, Azure for the Internet of Things. So if, if you are in the field service world and you're tracking anything that's um, needs, that, that has the potential to break down and there's anything that you could track within that device, whether it's the temperature or the frequency of repetitions, so that you might be able to detect a potential breakage in, in things that are out in the field, um, connected to the Azure platform, able to create a field service case immediately so that you can get someone on site to remedy a situation. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to touch on project service. This is new functionality that was released um, in the previous version of CRM, now available for D365E. Um, and it's basically for any organization who needs to have resources execute certain tasks that look and feel like a project. So obviously it's a real good fit for consulting organizations, attorneys, um, uh, legal practices, but it's also a fit for organizations that uh, you know, have to do installations, for instance. So there are steps that are done in the installation. You need skilled resources to do those installations, and it's a mini project that you set up that has then the ability to do uh, tracking of time and materials, uh, expenses, the ability to do the billing, and, um, ultim and ultimately be embedded within calendars. So when you are an individual who's assigned to um, one of the projects, you the assignments show up on your calendar and then you can interact with your calendar in terms of then posting the time and, and such like that. So really, it's really an unbelievable amount of functionality that's being thrown uh, out into the market at this point. There's a lot to digest here and uh, like I said, there will be an upcoming webinar to get into this much more deeply. So let's begin to advance to the next slide. Um, a little bit here about pricing. Um, at the very bottom of the side, slide here um, is the device pricing and um, at this point you know we'll, we'll I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that but there is some device pricing and we can get into that specifically if, for those clients that are interested in discussing it further but what I want to spend time is talking about the different um, and the addition pricing so for full users there's two different models there's a plan one and the plan two but realistically from an application perspective you have the ability to buy individual applications. So for instance, if you're interested in sales only, you could buy sales only. Or if you're only interested in field service, buy field service only. Um, but what Microsoft has done is they've, they've took, taken the functionality and created an unbelievably low price package if you buy it all. So the Enterprise Edition Plan 1 covers everything that previously was in CRM and is now in Dynamics 365 Plus because they've added quite a bit of additional functionality. And at, at the discounted rate, you can see there is $115. Um, a couple of things there. There is transition pricing that's available. So you know, have, we can um, absolutely talk to you about what transition pricing means and what that means for you if you're on a different plan. Um, additionally, there is um, step-down pricing. So if, based on the number of users you have, uh, as it goes up, your prices come down. Uh, on a per user basis. So that's $115 per month that's offered. Uh, the second plan is including the operations side. So for uh, $210 per month, you get the full operations side. Or you could decide just to buy the operations side individually for the $190 a month. So Microsoft's really done a nice job of making the pricing extremely attractive and you know, with the goal to help organizations to digest all the functionality and use it across the enterprise. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Jennifer now who's going to talk about the Dynamics 365 Business Edition. Jennifer, are you still there? Okay, we may have lost Jennifer. Well, Rob, I'll just uh, I'll go ahead and, and uh, move through the slides there, and if she joins us back, I'll let her take back over. So um, the Dynamics 365, if you remember, as I positioned um, that solution for the small, medium, you know, up to 250 user applications, but it has a, a lot of the same functionalities that Rob mentioned and I mentioned around 
financial management, sales, purchasing, inventory, uh, project management built right in the application. And so really just to give you a quick functionality overview, um, the areas around financial management, inventory management, sales, uh, the purchasing areas, um, your project, the basic job management's built in, and then some additional capabilities around multiple currencies and so forth. Um, so as you break down, everything in the dark colors are things that are available today and the version that was shipped on November 1st. Uh, some of the other areas are things that they are adding additional functionality for over the next few months in the, in the 2017. So, Lance, I'm on now. Can you hear me? Great. Absolutely. We can hear you now, Jennifer. So um, I'll transition back to you. Excellent, thank you. Um, my apologies for that. Um, so I, I want to take just a quick step back uh, to kind of the higher level around the business edition if I could. So as Lance and Rob have talked about, um, the enterprise edition of Dynamics 365 really is a combination and evolution of two established solutions. And Dynamics 365, the business edition, it's important to remember that this is a new solution designed specifically for the small to mid-size business market. Uh, typically customers that have outgrown their basic accounting software and in some cases uh, you know those companies that are in need of downsizing to more basic functionality which is why it happens to be a really important topic to a lot of our uh, GPSL and NAV customers. This is the solution formerly known as Project Madeira. It's built on the Azure platform and leverages the Dynamics Nav code base. Uh, today the Business edition of Dynamics 365 offers one app, and that is Dynamics 365 for financials. And so I'm kind of going back from Lance where you started, and then I'll bring us back around. Um, so as small to mid-sized businesses grow, it's becoming increasingly important that they have increased productivity across teams, the ability to make better decisions and a quicker return on investment. And support options need to be affordable, security needs to be solid, systems need to easily integrate and offer mobility. And Dynamics 365 for financials meets these needs and extends uh, user-specific accounting, purchasing, sales, inventory, project management functionality to the entire workforce leveraging familiar tools such as Office and, uh, excuse me, Outlook and SharePoint. And if we could advance Lance now to get a little more granular on the functionality. So today Dynamics 365 for financials offers core functionality in the areas that you see here on this slide. The solution's being developed in two-week Agile Sprint, which is a new approach for Microsoft on their ERP solution side. Um, they're releasing new functionality every other sprint, so we can expect new functionality every month. They have a very nice blog that keeps users up to date on the functionality that was just released and training to go along with it. Their goal for the full development of this application is to have all of the NAV starter pack functionality included in this solution by spring of 2017. And I say that um, with um, a caveat. It's very important to remember that this is not Dynamics NAV. It's just very similar functionality using the code base, but it is a new solution. Um, in the spring of 2017, we're also anticipating the addition of sales, marketing, and customer service apps specific to the business edition. These apps will include less functionality than the enterprise level apps of the same nature. So it's going to be important to really understand what your business needs are if you're looking at adding that solution. Um, Today, customers who are running Dynamics 365 for sales, which formerly known as CRM, can integrate that CRM solution with Dynamics 365 for financials, and there's just a mixed uh, SKU or license consideration there. And then um, outside, if you're looking for functionality that's outside of this uh, native app here in financials, the solution is extended, as Lance mentioned earlier, by apps found either in the app source or via custom apps developed with uh, Power Apps and Flow. The license structure, if you could advance, thank you, is also simplified and for the business edition and um, is available in two user types, a full user for $40 per user per month and a team member user, which we would consider a light user with read and some write access to different areas of the system for $5 per user per month. This pricing is per application. So you can see that there is a business plan available for the business edition and as additional apps come available for the business edition, users will be able to purchase 
a plan inclusive of all the apps for just $50 per user per month. There's also tiered pricing available for the business edition, uh, but we'll go into detail on that in future sessions. With the launch of our Dynamics 365 Business Edition practice here at Socius, we are prepared to sell and service this solution to clients today. And we also offer implementation packages um, of a rapid nature to get your Dynamics 365 for financials implementation going. So we have uh, three levels, and you choose the level of service that fits your needs. Our standard and fast track plans offer more traditional configuration, data conversion, and training services. Um, and recognizing the fact that a lot of organizations who will be using Dynamics 365 for financials will have um, very limited needs. We offer a quick start implementation as well, and that provides an option for companies, like I mentioned, with the more limited needs, but those companies that also have the resources to conduct an implementation internally with limited guidance from a partner. So with all of that said, let's talk about some uh, transition considerations. We have a lot of existing customers on the line today, and we recognize and understand that as an existing Dynamics customer, you have a lot of questions probably about the investment that you've made in your Dynamics solution and the future of your current solution and what it means to you that Microsoft has released these solutions. So Microsoft has provided, uh, Lance, if you could advance, um, this information here that uh, shows the evolution to Dynamics 365 for their entire solutions portfolio. It's really important for existing customers to know that the SMB products especially go forward um, as they are today. So uh, you can see that the CRM uh, solution has been broken down into modules between sales and customer service and then um, is transitioning into different apps under Dynamics 365 Enterprise Edition. Dynamics AX7, obviously now Dynamics 365 for operations, Project Madeira now the business edition with the financials app released as of today. And then you can see that Microsoft has clearly stated that the existing SMB ERP solutions, GPNAV and SL will continue to be developed and customers are not being forced to transition. We also have a roadmap that is a um, a different visualization of what we can expect from Microsoft showing the different uh, product release points and this is their development roadmap for going past 2019 for all of their dynamic solutions. You can see that they've stated ongoing development for every single solution in the portfolio past 2019. So there's definitely no, no reason for existing customers to panic um, and you're not being forced to transition. For those customers who are interested in considering a transition, we can dig in a little bit deeper into um, who's a good fit for the different solutions. So there's obviously quite a difference between the business edition and, oper and excuse me, the enterprise edition. For Dynamics 365, for financial stay, companies who are um, growing but still small to mid-size, uh, usually 250 employees or less, 250 users or less, although we will likely see more around the 10 to 100, excuse me, 10 to 100 user uh, base within this company. If you're dealing with disparate systems, you need easy integration. If you need uh, good uh, productivity in the cloud across your workloads, companies outgrowing QuickBooks or something similar like a Sage 50. And then of course, existing GP, NAV, and SL customers who are downsizing or are in need of very limited and basic functionality and maybe you're looking to reduce costs of ongoing renewals. Those, those um, considerations would be, uh, or those items I guess would be a good fit for Dynamics 365 for financials. For operations, uh, we're looking, really looking for growth focused companies with revenues between 50 and 750 million. Um, and as Lance mentioned earlier, typically these companies have more complex process management internally. They have very process-driven cultures, advanced intercompany and complex reporting requirements. Many of them have global business operations that need to be accommodated. Obviously, uh, uh, there's a high transaction volume and a need for scalability and high availability within these organizations. And they perform business activities across excuse me, across industry types such as distribution, retail, and manufacturing. 
there is a minimum of 20 users for this solution, but it's definitely designed uh, to accommodate organizations with 250 users and above. And a very important part or point for both operations and customer engagement at the enterprise level is organizations that do have the ability to commit the financial, business, and technology resources to support the application lifecycle and the business transformation that they're looking to uh, perform. So on the customer engagement side, uh, 25 or more users, these companies typically have the need to improve customer relations relations and insight while driving efficiency in customer facing roles. They have a desire to transform their business with different uh, digital transformation um, items such as analytics, mobile, social engagement. They are ready to move to the cloud across their workloads and really can accommodate any level of complex, well, complexity in their processes and again uh, you know that that ability to commit the resources necessary to um, have a successful implementation is very important. Lance and Rob, is there anything that you want to add to that customer fit slide? No, I think not. I think the one on the operations, just the whole business activities across, and we have a lot of customers that are uh, dis a distributor, they have a retail front end and they do some light manufacturing in the background and, and AX or what is now 365 for operations is built to address all of those and the workloads are already built in so it's not pulling together modules or areas, the system was built ground up to handle that type of business activity. So that's my only addition. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so um, what are the existing customer options? So you do, as an existing Dynamics customer, have options for your own path. For some customers, transitioning uh, to Dynamics 365 basically requires new license queues at the time you renew your agreement. Um, but the product that they're running today will not change, and CRM online customers are a good example of this. So this is working proactively to inform customers and walk through transitions with them. So if you fall in that category, you can expect to see information forthcoming and especially around the time of your renewal. On-premise customers have the option of staying with their current product or transitioning, so either now or later, and it all depends on what your business needs are. There is a promotion available for customers who want to transition. This will be available for three years, according to Microsoft, um, and it depends on the product, but the discount is approximately 40% um, um, to transition to either the new SKU or the new product. The key here really is that you lean on Socius for guidance on a possible transition because there are so many different transition types depending on license types. And there are a number of things to consider when it comes to transitioning such as you know, timing, functionality, and budget. And so with that in mind, Socius is here to guide you through your transition evaluations. We're offering path forward alignment discussions for our customers to help you assess your readiness for digital transformation and offer recommendations on the best direction for you. So given the fact that there are vast differences between certain products, when you're considering a transition from, let's say, GP to Dynamics 365 for operations or from GP to financials even, um, the differences are so vast that we find it imperative pr to perform a gap fit analysis and that'll be a very personalized discussion that will come with a personalized review of Dynamics 365 against your business needs to make sure that we're giving you the best recommendation for a path forward. Okay, so next steps, we do have a series of webinars forthcoming and we have several listed here that are specific to existing customers running specific products. So our next one, as Rob mentioned earlier, is November 30th, Dynamics 365 considerations for CRM customers. Following that, we will have sessions specific to AXGP and NAV customers. Um, and this is just a, a snapshot into the, the webinars that we'll be hosting. There will be additional around the specific products as well uh, for Dynamics 365. And uh, one on Socius OneCloud business application hosting options for non-Dynamics 365 platforms. So if you are an on-premise customer not interested in moving to Dynamics 365, but you're interested in exploring the cloud uh, hosting options that we have available for you, we'll have a session on that as well. So that information will be coming to you via email and posted out um, via our social networks. In the meantime, if you are interested in having a discussion around um, transitioning to Dynamics 365, we urge you to reach out to the different contacts that we have listed here, and it's broken down by customers. And of course, then for general questions, um, if you don't know who to go to, you're certainly welcome to reach out to me. 
at this time, um, I, I see that we're a minute past 3.30. I want to thank you again for joining us today, and we will go ahead and wrap, and I'll hand it over to Lindsay. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone again for joining us today, and feel free to reach out to Lance, Jennifer, Rob, or Rick um, if you have any additional questions, um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.